How do you prove the world wrong when everyone says your invention is too dangerous, too noisy, and too complex to ever fly? Let's set the scene. For decades, the tilt rotor was aviation's impossible dream. A machine that could take off like a helicopter, fly like a jet, and land on a hospital roof or an oil rig. The military tried and nearly failed with the V-22 Osprey, and the idea of a civil tilt rotor? Never going to happen, said the experts. But then, Italy's engineers did what no one thought possible. They built the AW609, a tilt rotor designed for real-world rescue, offshore, and city-to-city -city missions. And in 2025, they flew a next-generation demonstrator that changed the game for good. This is the story of the tilt rotor they said would never fly, how the V-22's military mindset nearly killed the dream, and how Italy's civil engineering finally made it real. After digging through crash reports, NASA wind tunnel data, and the blueprints of both the V-22 and AW609, I found a transformation that will change how you see aviation. While the world focused on military failures, Italy was quietly solving the problems that made civil tilt rotors seem impossible. What you're about to see is a David versus Goliath story, not just about technology, but about mindset. The tilt rotor's reputation was torched in the 1990s. The V-22 Osprey, born from the ashes of the failed 1980 Eagle Claw rescue, was supposed to be the future of military aviation. But between 1991 and 2000, four test crashes killed 30 people. Vortex Ring State, VRS, sent one Osprey into the ground. Control and hydraulic faults caused another. Headlines called it a Widowmaker. The idea of a civil tilt rotor? Laughable. Civil certification seemed impossible. The V-22 was too noisy, too complex, and too risky for city helipads or offshore platforms. Regulators worried about blade vortex interaction, BVI, noise, safety perception, and cost. The stigma was so strong that for years, civil tilt rotor was a punchline in aviation circles. But the V-22 did something no one expected. It proved tilt rotors could work, if you accepted military trade-offs. The Osprey cruises at 240 to 275 knots, climbs to 25,000 feet, and can take off and land vertically. It's flown over 700,000 hours in Iraq, Afghanistan, Haiti, Libya, and on carrier decks. But every capability came with a cost. To fit on ships, the V-22's rotors had to be small, leading to high disc loading and 80-plus knot downwash. Deck heat was so intense, ships needed thermion coatings. Auto rotation was poor. If you lost power below 1,600 feet, you were in trouble. The V-22's fixes were military. Software warnings for sink rate and VRS, nacelle and hydraulic redesigns, strict ops limits, and formation training. When a gearbox failed off Japan in 2023, eight people died and the fleet was grounded. Flights only resumed in 2024 with new training and maintenance protocols. The V-22 proved the concept, but also proved the trade-offs were brutal. Enter Italy. Leonardo didn't try to copy the V-22. They asked, what would a civil tilt rotor need to succeed? The AW609 was designed for 270 knots, pressurized to 25,000 feet, and built for known icing. Triple redundant flyby wire, two PT6C67A engines, and a cabin that could carry two stretchers and five medics for EMS, or nine passengers for offshore missions. The missions were civil. Emergency medical services, offshore oil and gas, parapublic and security, downtown to downtown city hops. The AW609 could fly Milan to Paris, helipad to helipad, over the weather with no airport detour. The engineering was real, but as of 2025, the AW609 still wasn't certified. The missions were clear, but the regulatory path was slow. Here's what Italy solved that the military never had to. Over weather reliability, door-to-door -door time, and redundancy for civil ops. 
pressurization and icing certification meant the AW609 could climb over storms, not detour around them. Direct routes slashed travel time for medevac and offshore missions. Redundancy was built for civil risk tolerance, not military acceptable loss. Italy also tackled noise. NASA's TRAM program showed that Blade Vortex Interaction, BVI, was the dominant noise source. The FAA issued tilt rotor noise rules in 2013, and Italy worked with NASA to model and reduce BVI. The AW609 wasn't just a civil osprey, it was a clean sheet solution to the blockers that kept tilt rotors out of cities and offshore pads. Noise was the last barrier. For military ops, the V-22's BVI slap was acceptable. For civil certification, it was a deal breaker. NASA's TRAM research used a quarter scale V-22 in a wind tunnel to measure and model BVI. The goal, predict and reduce noise for urban and offshore ops. The FAA's 2013 tilt rotor noise rules set the standard. Italy's AW609 team worked with NASA to meet and exceed those standards using wind tunnel data and blade design tweaks. The noise problem wasn't solved overnight, but it was being engineered, not ignored. Then, in December 2025, Leonardo flew the next generation civil tilt rotor NGCTR, a tech demonstrator that took everything learned from the AW609 and pushed it further. The NGCTR used advanced wing architecture, a thermoplastic V-tail, non-tilting engines, a split gearbox drivetrain, and modular distributed flight control. Performance targets, 280 knots, 1,000 nautical miles, and a platform ready for future missions. The NGCTR wasn't a product, yet. But it proved that Italy wasn't just building one civil tilt rotor. They were building the platform for the next generation. The first flight was a signal. The never fly era was over. Now it was about where tilt rotors could fly best. Here's the real story. The V-22 was built for military constraints. Ship folding, small rotors, high disc loading, deck heat, and software fixes for hard problems. The AW609 and NGCTR was built for civil missions, pressurization, icing, redundancy, and noise research. Italy didn't ask, how do we make the V-22 civilian? They asked, what does a civil tilt rotor need to succeed? The result, a machine optimized for EMS, offshore and city-to-city -city missions, not just military exfiltration. The mindset split is the hidden story. V-22 solved problems with brute force and software. AW609 solved them with engineering and mission focus. The world's first civil tilt rotor wasn't a copy. It was a clean break from military trade-offs. So what's true today? The AW609 is not yet certified, but it's designed for EMS, offshore, and parapublic roles. The specs are real, the missions are credible, but it's not flying revenue passengers yet. The NGCTR flew in December 2025 as a tech demonstrator, proof that Italy is maturing the next generation of civil tilt rotor tech. The V-22 resumed flights in March 2024 after the 2023 grounding. It's still delivering unique missions no other platform can match, but the constraints are managed, not eliminated. The military proved tilt rotors work. Italy is proving the civil version can matter. The tilt rotor's journey is more than a technical saga. It's a lesson in mindset, engineering, and the courage to solve the right problems. Failure. Civil tilt rotors are too dangerous, noisy, and complex. Catalyst. The military proved the concept, but Italy engineered the civil path. Success. Credible civil missions. NGCTR's first flight and a new era for city-to-city -city aviation. The never fly era is over. Now it's about where tilt rotors fly best and who's willing to solve the blockers, not just copy the trade-offs. If this transformation story changed how you see aviation, 
hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Your support helps me uncover more stories of how mindset and engineering can overturn decades of doubt. Do you think Italy's tilt rotor proves that civil innovation can outsmart military trade-offs? Or is this just the beginning of a new era in vertical flight? Give me your take in the comments, because this debate about mindset versus muscle is just getting started. Remember, the next time someone says, never fly, they might be watching you land on the roof.